must never forget the price paid by these warriors. How many of you are veterans or know someone who has a kid or a brother or a father or someone in Afghanistan or Iraq? Well, we owe you a hell of a price, man. Every single day I check. I have my tax deck in the State Department every morning because it's important. The exact number of fallen angels. The exact number. The exact number of wounded. Ladies and gentlemen, when I use the term fallen angels in and out of Iraq and Afghanistan 20 times, the first time I heard the term, it was kind of chilling. I was flying out in the C-17, which you fly out of uh, Baghdad. And uh, I think it was a, uh, a colonel, I'm not sure of the rank, who's dark as his night. He said, Mr. Vice President, permission to board a fallen angel. That's how they refer to someone, a soldier who's killed in the region. And on came a flag with a casket that was bolted to the floor of that cargo plane. And it turned it from a plane into a cathedral. And all all of us could think about was the family waiting, waiting for that body to return. So when I am precise about the numbers, it's because every single one of those lives matters. Every single one of those lives matters. Fifty thousand and fourteen wounded, and seventeen thousand of those with wounds that are going to require extensive care the rest of their lives. We owe them and their families an incredible debt. We have an obligation not only to keep them in our prayers and keep them in our care, but we have a sacred obligation. There's only one sacred obligation we have. We have obligations to our children and to the elderly and to the poor. But there's no obligation that is the same as the obligation we have. To, that we send our, make sure we equip our troops, we send them to war, and care for them when they come home. It's the only sacred obligation.
people refinance their homes. You know, there are 14 million of you who have never missed a mortgage payment. You are in a situation, you are in a situation where you're probably paying six, six and a half, seven percent. You go down to the local bank and they say, no, your house is now underwater now because of the economy. You don't have as much equity. I can't refinance. We have a proposal. Marcy supports, we're all supporting. It just says for all those big banks that that have more than $50 billion we help bail out, they put a few cents on $100 and they put a reinsurance fund out there. Not a penny for the taxpayer. And everybody could refinance, literally, they could refinance, saving over $3,000 a year. In my neighborhood, where I come from, that allows you to pay your automobile insurance. That allows you to keep your kid in college. That allows you to pay your property. That allows you to do a lot. $3,000 is a lot of money in our country.